Hi, I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar. What will rising rates mean for bonds and bond funds? That's a burning question for investors today, and here today to answer that question for us is Eric Jacobson. He is Director of Fixed Income Research for Morningstar. Eric, thanks for being here. Glad to be with you, Christine. So let's start with a, a basic functional question. It's been a while since we've had a sustained period of rising interest rates. Can you discuss, Eric, the mechanics of what happens in a rising rate environment and why that tends to be bad for bonds and bond funds? Well, let's just start with the fact that when people talk about rising rates, it's important to distinguish between what is affected by the government, which is principally what people refer to as Fed funds, right. which is the rate that's controlled by the uh, Federal Open Market Committee. And that's something that changes depending on meetings that they have every few months. And it's what, what's referred to often as a policy rate. Usually that's a very short-term rate. Right now it's targeted between zero and, and 25 basis points or a quarter point. It's very, very low. And when that number changes, it will very likely affect a lot of different rates that are linked to it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> whether it's corporate borrowing or uh, any number of loans of any kind that might be linked either to Fed funds or more likely um, something, some other rate that, that benchmarks off of it or near, very close to it like LIBOR, uh, that could really affect borrowing costs for a lot of entities. The other issue, of course, is what happens to longer term rates. And while the government can't affect those as they have in the last year to some degree by purchasing securities in the market and so forth, uh, by and large, where longer term rates are is determined a lot by the investing community more, more widely. So what happens after the Fed next raises short term rates is a little difficult to say today because we're probably far enough away from it that we still don't know quite where we'll be in terms of inflation, right. in terms of what the market expects. And depending on what, that, what that's like at the time, we may see long term rates move up with short term rates or temporarily they may stay relatively flat or fall a little if the market isn't really concerned about inflation. But by and large, and again, this is not really a prediction, but sort of a description of consensus, there's a feeling that not only is the Fed going to raise rates um, by the end of the year, perhaps, but also that eventually market yields across the maturity spectrum will probably come up some uh, over the next year or so. And that in turn depresses bond prices. So let's talk about some of the worst places to be in a rising rate environment, uh, places where you would see potentially real losses. Well, oddly enough, in, in cases like this, the bonds that have the highest credit quality are typically the most sensitive to changes in treasury yields treasuries themselves being the first example. But then again, even high quality investment grade corporate bonds, for example, if their yields are relatively tight to treasuries, as we say, they will tend to be very sensitive to price changes. And the longer the maturity on that bond, the longer its duration is, the more price sensitivity it's probably going to have. So the flip side would be that some lower quality bonds, while they may have other types of risks, might be uh, less interest rate sensitive. That's absolutely right. And, and what's important important sometimes to understand in scenarios like this is that that depends a lot on the economy as well. So if you go back and look for examples like 1994 when rates spiked up pretty sharply but at the same time the economy was doing pretty well. So lower quality bonds benefited from that improving economic picture at the same time that high quality bonds were being hurt pretty badly because rates were rising. Right. So in terms of practical advice for bond investors, I've been hearing from a lot of investors who are thinking about getting a little bit fancy with their fixed income exposure, maybe downplaying intermediate term bonds, sticking with cash rather than having any fixed income securities. What's your advice about how to navigate in this kind of environment where the expectation is that rates will be heading up? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the idea of going all the way to cash because it kind of, you know, it leaves you out of the market and it yields are zip. And right yields now. are right. And the dangerous part there very often is that people who 
consider that, sometimes say, well, I'll just take on a little bit more risk than cash. I'll go into a very short-term bond fund, which isn't necessarily a bad idea. There's some very good ones, but what you want to be really careful not to accidentally get into something that's taking on risks that you don't really see or understand. Because in that very competitive universe, it's not entirely uncommon for, for funds to take on credit risk or some sort of structural risk with mortgages, perhaps, that, that uh, maybe the manager isn't completely going to be in control of if the market goes sideways. Right. So you're thinking basically stick with your plan, um, maybe delegate to a manager who has some flexibility to navigate in an uncertain environment? That's right. Unless you feel you're 100% certain you know what's going to happen, and I think people should be, probably be, be more realistic about it than that, right? That you probably don't want to adjust your, your asset allocation based on a near-term expectation for the market, but keep it consistent with what your overall personal financial goals are. And if you're taking too much risk in your bond funds to begin with, well, that's a different issue. And that's something you may want to look at spreading it around, but I would think of that as more a strategic question. Okay. Eric, thanks for the practical advice. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar.com. At Morningstar, we feel it is important to schedule regular checkups of your investments. This is the reason we're pleased to announce Portfolio Monitor, a new and easier way to keep track of your investments. With a few clicks of the mouse, receive a monthly report that provides a comprehensive and customized summary of your portfolio, sent automatically to your inbox. Portfolio Monitor provides a concise digest of all the best features of premium membership. Become a premium member with our 14-day free trial to start receiving Portfolio Monitor today.